This one's for science. We will cut the bike down the middle. So lighting is super horrible right now, but I don't want to be in my garage because this is going to make a mess of carbon, steel, and aluminum because we're going to be cutting three bikes in half to see what's inside. So what I've got is three frames that I picked up from the Salt Lake Bicycle Collective that were going to be thrown in the trash. One's carbon, one's aluminum, and one's steel. And we're going to see if we can cut them in half and see what's inside. See if we can learn anything from them and see what the differences are in the different frames. What? This is your solution to ruin the bike? I know this kind of goes against the ethos of my channel of giving old things new life, but we're giving these a new life with science. <laughs> and really, these would have gone in the dumpster. All of them really shouldn't be rebuilt. And that's why we're cutting into them. Alright, first off, the carbon frame. What are some of the things that I see on it? So the bottom bracket was interesting. I don't know if you can see on camera, but they've lined the inside of the bottom bracket with one layer of carbon fiber, but it's an aluminum shell, which is what I expected. You can see um, the carbon from the different mold areas. There's plaster. Um, or something like that, filler type stuff in some of the corner areas. It's either for the build process. You can see the carbon fiber area for the seat tube, seat post here, um, has been cleared out. I think that was cleared out um, after probably it was molded. You can see a little bit of carbon in, in the seam areas. The head tube really the head tube area really, it's just the larger area, I think, that gives it the strength that it needs. And then you've got, again, aluminum cups um, on the top and the bottom of the, of the head tube. Um, interesting stuff. It was really, really quite easy to cut that carbon fiber frame. Okay, so that was the easy one. Now to what I expect will be the next hardest, the Aluminum. Aluminium. All right. One blade down. <laughs> this one totally sheared off right at the head of the sawzall. So we, well, I'll have to get that out. It's kind of stuck. Keep veering in a little bit. This aluminum is a lot harder than the carbon. Quick tip, when you're running cords and you're pulling on them and you don't want them to come apart, just tie them in a little, a little knot. I'll keep it together. Fresh blade.
Almost there. Next up, the aluminum frame. Again, this one really wasn't much more difficult to cut than the carbon fiber. Just in a few of the seams in the bottom bracket, you can see, you can see in here, it's interesting to look at the welds, kind of the inside. We're used to seeing the beefy outside weld areas of aluminum. And it's interesting to see the inside, how, how most of that that weld um, that's formed and the buildup, which makes sense, is on the outside. There's not as much. Um, you can actually see really clearly where the two pieces come together. Um, it's even interesting on this one, you even got like a kind of an air pocket formed by the, the down tube and the top tube. And uh, yeah, interesting to cut out inside. You can see on this one, you can see some interesting weld stuff breaking in onto the inside of the tube there. But real clean. Uh, on this one, there doesn't appear to, there doesn't appear to be any budding of the tubes. Um, budding meaning that like on the, the inside parts where it doesn't need to be quite as strong. Um, are thinner, aren't thinner here. Um, the tube itself is thicker on this one, on that down tube, but on the inside, the aluminum one is, is actually really, really clean. Of course, there's no rusting like we expect to see on the steel frame. And you can see just just some like surface wear and stuff on the inside where the seat tube is. Not a lot of damage on that. This is like a late 90s, um, maybe early 2000 Trek frame. Um, yeah, interesting. Two down, the hardest one to go. The aluminum was kind of cool. It made this cool sound. I don't know if it gets picked up by the, the mic on the camera, but it made this kind of cool cool sound <laughs> oh the steel one scares me though um yeah let's get to it All right, oh. that's, um, that's number three. And, and last but not least, the steel frame. Now this is a chromoly frame. I was hoping to find a budded one, but this is not a budded frame. What's interesting on this is the inside of both the down tube and the, and the top tube are, are not as rusty as I thought they would be. I really thought there'd be, I mean, this is a late, 80s maybe, giant, and there's not a lot of rust on that top tube and the down tube. Again, you can't see any budding. These are straight chromoly tubes. This is a really heavy frame, and that's why. But you can see we have plenty of, of rust built up on the seat tube area, and you can actually see 
Lots of grooves from the seat post probably being twisted back and forth as it's moved in and out. And just the damage that's been done to the, the seat tube from the, the, from the seat post. Really interesting to see those grooves. And then it stops. And then you still have some rust, but there's a, a black coating. And then we do have some rust. Let me turn it. Most of the rust, other than at the top of the seat tube, is down here at the bottom of the seat tube. You can see where it's probably accumulated on both the, the down tube and the seat tube right before the bottom bracket. Of course, you've got the thicker, thicker steel on the bottom bracket. I didn't cut open a, a, the chain stays, but this is another area that often you see rust on steel bikes. And it's because the water the moisture that gets into the frame settles down here by the bottom bracket, even though typically you have holes to help it drain, um, it still gets caught and doesn't drain out completely. So they're all cut in half now, and the question is, what did we learn from all of this? If anything, um, one thing I learned, actually, before we get too far, um, this was easier to cut than I thought it would be. Sawzall with a metal blade, six inch metal blade on it was just right for cutting even the steel. Um, going from the carbon fiber, which cut really, really quickly. The aluminum took a little more work, especially at the welds. And then the steel, a lot more work. In fact, I think I damaged my hearing with the steel frame. I should have put on ear protection. But it shows Really, the carbon fiber feels really flimsy once I cut it in half. The aluminum and the steel still feel, still feel like they have some rigidity. And I think, to me, it speaks to the strength and enduring quality of steel frames. The one thing you have to watch out for is that rust. This was a very different but fun one to do with you all. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. And thank you so much to the Salt Lake Bicycle Collective for providing these uh, garbage frames so that I wasn't ruining <laughs> something that could be given new life. And uh, the, their, their new life was science in this one. So again, uh, thank you. If you haven't already and you want to see more content like this or more of my normal content, restoring vintage bikes with all of that ASMR goodness, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on the notifications. Be sure also to check out my sponsors in the description below. I love the companies that I work with like Park Tool, um, Spray Dot Bike, Club Ride, Muck Off, and Bike List. In fact, go ahead and check out the bikes I have on Bike List. I'm going to be listing some more soon now that it's spring. And like I mentioned in my last video, I just moved again. I know you guys are all like, why does he keep moving? Um, it's been a hectic year. We have a great new location house that we're excited about. And uh, I still don't have most of the shop set up. But as always, look for opportunities to give those old things new life. Even though I kind of killed a few bikes today. <laughs> but yeah, give them new life and I will see you on the next video. Ciao.